Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Nifty Nintendo, the podcast where we break down everything Nintendo every week. I've got a really great show for you guys this week, but before we get there, just a few housekeeping notes. For those of you that watch this on YouTube, I promise better videos are coming. I'm in the process of getting enough funds to procure much better editing software. And for those that only listen to the audio, you're not going to be left out either. I'm also getting a microphone, finally, which I desperately need because I don't know if you can hear, they're actually doing road work here right now. Yeah, hear that? Distracting making it really hard to record. Still, the show must go on, so I'm going to do my best to record around all of this noise. may not be the best, but it's all I can do. But as I mentioned, they will get better in the weeks to come. Just have to be patient and stick with me. As I mentioned at the top of the show, we've got a great show for you guys planned today. E3 is finally upon us, so we will get to all of that stuff a little bit later. For now though, let's quickly run through the headlines. All right, thankfully because it is the week before E3, it was a fairly light news week. However, there were a few nuggets that I would like to go over. First up, Shinyudin and Ra- I don't know how to pronounce this properly. Rataleika Games have announced that Heroes Trials will be coming to Nintendo Switch this summer. Heroes Trials is a top-down action game that promises to be as deep as any RPG out there. However, also great for speedrunners. The game can be beaten in four hours or less, or if you want to explore the entire overworld, it could take even longer. The choice is really up to you. If you're looking for something like the original Zeldas, or perhaps a Marvel Ultimate Alliance style of game, check this one out this summer. This past weekend saw the release of the Mario Tennis Aces online demo. I had a lot of fun playing with this demo, however, I found out I am absolutely awful at this game. This game was surprisingly deep, however, and in order to get a little bit better, I think maybe I should pick this one up and practice. For those of you that I played in the online tournament, you're welcome for the points. Next, a little bit of news for all you board game fans out there. The game developer Asmodee is bringing the hit board game Carcassonne to the Switch. The hit medieval town building game will be coming to the Nintendo Switch this winter. That's winter 2018. Asmodee also promises to be bringing other board games to the Switch, but for now this is what they are providing. I've spent many an hour playing this game with friends, and I'm curious to see if there will be any online functionality or if it will only be local multiplayer. Regardless, we'll find out more later, and I am very excited. This last bit of news comes from the guys at Game Freak and Pokemon Company. Sadly, it is not the best news. It is about Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee's online. Those of you hoping to just hop online in Pokemon Let's Go and play with some people you've never met before, not gonna happen. You are only able to play with friends. In a statement to Game Informer, the Pokemon company said, Players will only be able to battle and trade Pokemon with their friends. There is no GTS, Wonder Trade, or Battle Spot. The company said players will also need to sign up for a Nintendo Switch online subscription in order to access them. So, you can only play with your friends, and only if they also happen to be on the Nintendo Switch online subscription service launching this September. I'm sure most of us will be anyways, but still. Alrighty, let's quickly run through this week's new releases. As usual, a literal boatload of Nindies have been released, the first of which is Shape of the World, followed by A Magical High School Girl. Now this game, uh, not sure how to think about this one. Next we have another Neo Geo title in the form of Riding Hero. After that, a game I am particularly excited about, although I have yet to play the first one, and that is Banner Saga 2. I would really like to check this out because I love turn-based tactics style RPGs, especially Advance Wars, just saying. Not only that, but the art style for this is enough 
for the price of admission. Maybe I'll pick up both now that they're out on the Switch and do a, a review for you guys a little bit later. After that, we have Degeneration, the original, followed by Grid Retro Enhanced. Next, we have Iro Hero, which is an Ikaruga style bullet hell game and perfect for those that want just a taste of the action. It does look a little bit easier than Ikaruga, which was released last week and I am dying to play. Next, we have Cattlebat Wars, followed by Samurai Defender Ninja Warfare. I don't know how you have Defender and Warfare, but oh well. It is a tower defense type of game, very similar to the way Plants vs. Zombies is played. After that, we have One Strike and Operation Hardcore. We also have a few releases on the 3DS. One is Storm Chaser Tornado Alley, which is a tornado simulator. How that works... You'll just have to pick it up and find out. Should note that it's only available on new 3DS systems. Same with the next one, which is Games for Toddlers 2. Only available on new 3DS systems. After that, we get Rainbow Snake for the 3DS. Followed by this week's big release for both the Nintendo 3DS and the Switch, and that is Sushi Striker. I haven't had the opportunity to play Sushi Strikers on the 3DS, however, I did play the demo on the Switch. It is a fun game with a very ridiculous concept. It also blends quite a few different genres from monster collecting like Pokemon, uh, as well as RPG elements, but at its core, it is a puzzle game. A puzzle game where you eat sushi and fling the plates at your opponent. Now, I can't speak for the 3DS because, as I mentioned, I have yet to play it. However, on the Switch, you can play with touchscreen controls or with the Joy-Con. I found the touchscreen controls to be a little bit easier to use. Judging from the trailer, I think for the 3DS, you probably use the touchscreen exclusively. Honestly, it works the best anyways. All right, moving on. We have what we came here for, and that is all of the wonderful E3 news, rumors, and plain old wish lists that personally I have on my mind. Hopefully you're thinking the same thing, maybe you're not. Let me know in the comments about the things you are looking forward to from E3. Why don't we start with what we do know about Nintendo's E3 this year, 2018, and that is that it will focus almost primarily on Super Smash Bros. for the Nintendo Switch. For those of you that remember, we got a little tease, just a little bit, of Smash Bros. during Nintendo's Direct earlier this year when they were announcing some other games. If you remember, at the end of the video, we saw the, the kids from Splatoon 2, they're inking each other, and one of them turns around and looks up, I believe it's the Squid Girl, looks up, and all we see is a Smash Bros. emblem with a couple characters, I think it was Link and Mario, and then some silhouettes at the bottom of that Smash Bros. logo. And we didn't hear anything until just recently when they said that, yes, E3 will have a focus on Smash Bros. And then after that, they announced the Super Smash Bros. Invitational. The Smash Bros. Invitational will be a tournament that will be live streamed on Nintendo Treehouse Live over the course of a few days next week. But that's not the only tournament that Nintendo will be hosting. We will also get the Splatoon 2 World Championships next week. It'll be fun to watch the Ink Squad go at each other and see who finally takes that trophy. A few other things that we know are going to be at Nintendo's E3. One will be Galaxy Variant S. Another will be Roller Coaster Tycoon for Switch. As well as Monster Hunter Generation Switch, which is just Monster Hunter Double Cross from Japan coming out west. So for those that couldn't get enough Monster Hunter and are waiting for maybe Monster Hunter World, maybe they don't have a PlayStation or PC, you still want Monster Hunter, this one's for you. It will be playable at Nintendo's E3 this year. Speaking of playable at E3, Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee will also be playable at E3. 
So it'll be neat to see the coverage coming out of that and also the fan reactions. Now I think obviously Nintendo is banking pretty heavily on Super Smash Bros. And you know there's no reason they shouldn't. It is a huge franchise, a massive success. Not only that, but has a very large esports community behind it. So it makes sense for them to focus on this. It Personally, I'm the most excited for Smash Bros. I've played every single iteration with the one for GameCube, Melee being my favorite. So I'm just, I'm absolutely dying for this one. I played the snot out of the 3DS one because I could take it on the go. And with the Switch, obviously you can do that as well. It'll be fun to take my Switch to a friend's place or have them come over and we can play against each other on our own screens. It's just, it's so exciting, absolutely exciting. Um, of the things we know that are going to happen at Nintendo's E3 press conference or booth Treehouse Live this year, which are the most you are excited about? Is it the Pokemon, Galaxy, perhaps you're dying for a little more Monster Hunter? Personally, it's all Smash Bros for me, I can't wait. Let me know what you think in the comments below, or you can tweet me. All right, now let's move on to some rumors for Nintendo's E3 this year. This is always the fun part of any E3, the rumors. We've all been reading them in the news. Of course, I wonder which ones will actually come true. The leading rumor right now for Nintendo is that Fortnite will be coming to the Nintendo Switch the popular battle royale game that is ruining relationships the world over might be coming to Switch. We don't know. There's been images leaked with box art and various announcements from people all over. Of course, it could be photoshopped. You never know. The next rumor is that we will have more info on the Yoshi game for Switch. If you remember last year, we got just uh, a little bit of gameplay for it. Perhaps this year we'll get a little bit more, maybe even a small spotlight for it, and then perhaps a release date, because right now we don't really have one. The next rumor that I have heard is that we will be getting a Fire Emblem game for the Switch, one that would be different from Warriors, perhaps along the same lines as the 3DS turn-based RPGs which I would love, but uh, you never know. It's possible that they might ride out Fire Emblem Warriors till the end of the year, maybe announce something for next year. We'll see. Another rumor that has been making the rounds is that a Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword remake will be coming to the Switch. That would work. You could use the Joy-Con like you would a Wii Remote, perhaps. I don't really feel like this is coming. I don't think Nintendo needs a Legend of Zelda game right now. I think they can still ride the Breath of the Wild hype for one more year before they have to announce a new Zelda game or perhaps a remake. And if they were to remake a Zelda game, would it be Skyward Sword? Personally, I've played a lot of Legend of Zelda games. I've played almost every game in the franchise. Skyward Sword has not been one of them. So if they did remake Skyward Sword, I own it, I own it for my Wii, but I have yet to play it. If they did remake Skyward Sword, would it be enough to get me involved in that game? I'm not sure. I think I'd still rather play it on the Wii, although the controls were a little rough on the Wii if I remember. Maybe they'll be a little tighter for the Switch. Regardless, I think I'd rather see another Breath of the Wild style game. For those of you that are my friends on the Nintendo network, you will notice that it's almost the only game I play. I've sunk hundreds of hours into Breath of the Wild and I still keep going back. A third party rumor is that Doom 2 will be announced for Switch this year. I know that the folks over at ID had some issues shoehorning the first Doom into the Switch. However, if they can do it with the first one, perhaps they can do it with the second. It would be a very surprise announcement. I know that there are a lot of shooter fans and Nintendo has been opening itself up to more violent or adult themed games. So perhaps Doom 2 would be great. We also have Wolf 2 coming out this month, so there might be able to be some synchronicity there, maybe extra content in Doom 2 if you buy Wolf 2 or if you already bought Doom. So it's possible then that maybe something will be announced 
at E3 this year. Also, on the third-party side of things, if you remember at the Game Awards last year, we got just a screenshot of a 3 for Bayonetta 3, so the rumor is that we will see actual game footage this year, and fingers crossed for maybe a release date. And if Bayonetta 3 does come soon, maybe we'll get a trilogy pack. Back on the first party side of things, the final rumor that I have is for Star Fox Grand Prix. Star Fox Grand Prix is rumored to be the next Star Fox game in the series. However, it's not supposed to be a rail shooter. It is supposed to be more of a racing game, something like a wave race or a Diddy Kong racing but in space. I can't see it being like Mario Kart where you pick up an item such as a banana or whatever and use that as well as your racing skills to get ahead. I think in this case it is like you and your friends in our wings or, or maybe the tank and you, you use your lasers or your bombs, probably a finite amount of bombs, to get through the course and ahead of your friends. So I guess there, there wouldn't really be a single player story, kind of like the other ones. That's assuming any of this is true, of course, but the rumor is that a Star Fox game will be announced for Nintendo Switch at this year's E3 and it will be a racing game. People who have said they've seen it say it's it's beautiful, which is pretty much in line with most Star Fox games. Generally, Star Fox has been the game to push the limits of the console it's on. If you remember, the original Star Fox was the first to use polygons. Uh, Star Fox 64 pushed the graphics and then we got Star Fox 64 3D, but you know, this, I love Star Fox. Mind you, I haven't played really too much of them since the 3DS one, um, the GameCube version and the, the, the Wii U version was, was okay. I don't know how I feel about it being a racing game. I, I really enjoyed it being a rail shooter or like in Star Fox 64, you got the arena style fights where it was like a dog fight with the enemy. Maybe that's what this will be like. Maybe maybe they'll bring that back, kind of like the arena battles in Mario Kart, the balloon battles. If if you follow what I'm saying, that would be, I think that would be fun as a, as a multiplayer addition to a Star Fox themed racing game. So assuming these rumors are true. Which characters do you think would be in the game? I mean, outside of the obvious four, I mean, Fox, Slippy, Falco, and Peppy are obviously going to be in the game, but which other ones would they include? Which other ones would you want them to include? For me, probably the Panther, just because I like cats. That's it for the big rumors that have been swirling around Nintendo's E3 coverage this year. Which ones are you most excited for? I imagine a lot of you are excited for Fortnite. I think Fortnite is the one I'm most excited for. However, if the Star Fox Grand Prix thing does end up being true, I am willing to be cautiously optimistic, even though that franchise has failed to find itself in recent memory. Alright, on to the fun stuff. This is what I would call the E3 wish list. It is a little bit speculation and a little bit rumor, but all fun. I think at the top of this list for a lot of people would be if Monster Hunter World were to come to Switch. I know that perhaps it's not the most powerful piece of hardware, however, we did get Resident Evil 7 Cloud. Perhaps they can do the same with Monster Hunter. Personally, for me, the top of my wish list is an N64 Mini. For those of you that have been following over the last few episodes, I've done a ton of coverage about a possible N64 Mini, including a top 10 N64 game video. If you want, check that out. But personally, if they announce this, my E3 would be set. Another little piece of speculation that I think would be a an appropriate time for this would be some DLC for Mario Odyssey. 
I know that Odyssey has been out for a while now, and perhaps the fervor for it has died down a bit. People have beaten it, and we got like uh, the balloon chase thing a little earlier this year. However, I think now would be a good time for like a new proper kingdom for Mario to explore, or perhaps a few in the form of DLC. Speaking of Mario, it would be great to see a new Mario Kart. I know that's not likely. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is still selling like gangbusters, but it would be great to see something Mario Kart related as it is actually my favorite Nintendo franchise. For those of you that remember all the way to E3 last year, we got a small little teaser for Metroid Prime 4. Now wouldn't it be cool if we actually saw some gameplay footage for that this year and not only that if there was a surprise announcement for a Metroid Prime trilogy on Switch. Fingers crossed. Alright I know last week we got a lot of Pokemon news including the announcement of a core RPG coming next year. However, just this past week we heard that the new core RPG will feature new Pokemon with enhanced graphics and be released late next year. Now wouldn't it be cool if we got even just a screenshot of this new Pokemon game? Now I know that's probably not likely because it would steal some thunder huh, from Let's Go Pikachu or Let's Go Eevee. But as I said, this is a wish list, speculation, rumor, who knows, fingers crossed regardless. This is a little bit of third-party rumor speculation. Square is having a full press conference this year, so they have to fill that time. And if they do, the wish list for me would be, oh, this would be amazing for them to announce, especially with a new one coming, Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2 coming to Switch. I think it'd be an easy port. Maybe they've already got it in the works, but that would be an amazing surprise. Not only that, but my favorite RPG of all time, Final Fantasy VI. Please, please come to the Switch. Okay, one word. Seriously. Earthbound. Nintendo, where's the sequel? Seriously, Earthbound. You, 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 you announced that, and the world erupts in joy. All right, I know I said earlier that if... An Nintendo announced an N64 Mini, that would, that would be best to show for me. However, I'm going to revise that because if Nintendo announced an Advance Wars, doesn't even have to be for Switch, but a new Advance Wars for the 3DS even, then, then I, I'd, I'd be done. Just stick a fork in me because this is a franchise that needs to come back. Alright, well that's everything I had planned for some E3 goodness. Which of the rumors do you think are going to come true? Personally, I think Fortnite and perhaps Star Fox are about 80 to 90 percent sure going to happen. I'm also pretty sure that Mario DLC is probably inbound as well. As for speculation, wish list, I'm pretty sure y'all know how I feel about that, what I'm most excited for. But what are you most excited for? What do you think I left out of this? Is there anything you thought I left out of this? Why don't you let me know in the comments below, or perhaps send me a tweet. Now this is the part in the show where I would normally be taking your questions, however, I still haven't received any. So how about I pose a question to you guys? This is a question I read on IGN or Kotaku, I can't really remember which one. How do you feel about all these pre-E3 announcements? Do they take away from the hype of E3 or perhaps get you more excited for it? Why don't you let me know in the comments below how you feel about that. I'll also put a poll up on my Twitter page. This is also the point in the show where I would be usually doing a game review. However, I haven't had time to do that quite yet. I'm hoping that next week's episode I will be able to find a game to review. I plan on purchasing a new one. I'm not going to tell you which one, you'll just have to wait and see and review that one for you. Well, that's it for me this week. I'm going to apologize again for the audio. They are building, doing road work or whatever it is right outside my place, and it is loud. Not only that, but it's annoying. Also, please, again, new software, better videos, and a mic, better audio is coming, as well as RSS streaming. Just got to be patient a little bit longer, just a little bit longer. In the meantime, you can find me on Twitter at NiftyNinty, 
And it would be a huge help if you guys would please subscribe to my Patreon. It is patreon.com slash nifty ninty. You can find the link in the description below. If you like what you hear, tell your friends, find me on Twitter, and please subscribe to Patreon. That's it for this week, and remember, stay nifty.